My name's Saul, but you can call me Paul. I know two first names, it's a little strange. Allow me to explain. See, I was born in the city of Tarsus to a couple of very devout Jewish parents who made sure that from the time I was very young, I went to school and memorized the Torah. You know, the first five books of the Old Testament. Yeah, all in my head. I quickly rose to the top of my class and before long I was hand-picked by one of the most famous rabbis in the land to be his student. He picked me, Saul, over all my other classmates because, well, I was the best. I knew my Torah better than anyone. I was a Jew above all other Jews. And I wasn't even just Jewish. I'm also a Roman citizen. Now this was a privilege that not many of my friends shared with me. But because I came from a wealthy family, I inherited my citizenship from my father. So I could go places only Romans could go. I could do things only Romans could do. And along with all the other perks and privileges of being a Roman citizen, I was also given a new name. Paulus, or Paul for short. So that's me, a man with two names. To my Jewish friends, I was Saul. To the Roman officials, I was Paul. And life was pretty good living in both worlds. I could travel anywhere, I could do business with anyone, but I always kind of hated it when people called me Paul. Not just because I didn't want to be associated with the corrupt Romans, but because Paul in Greek means small. I much preferred to go by my Hebrew name. You see, Saul was the name of the first king of Israel, and he was anything but small. He was taller, stronger, more handsome than anyone in the land. Just sharing his name made me feel like Jewish royalty. And I basically was. When your teacher's a famous rabbi, people start to recognize you. People start to know who you are. And I liked it. I liked that people knew my name. I was proud to be called Saul. But then one day there was a different name on people's lips. Jesus. He was this new rabbi in town that everyone was talking about. The guy was only about my age and he already had disciples of his own. And not just a few, but hundreds of people followed him around making all sorts of outrageous claims. People calling him a prophet. Others thought he might be the Messiah. A few even worshipped him as if he was God. Can you believe that? How stupid can people get? A man being treated like God? That was blasphemy. Jesus was just a regular guy like me. No, less important than me. He came from the hick town of Nazareth. His father was a poor carpenter that never amounted to anything. He didn't have any money. He didn't train under a famous rabbi. Jesus was a nobody from nowhere. But I was jealous. I wanted people to talk about me the way they talked about him. I hated him. I just wanted him to go away. And I didn't have to wait too long before some of my friends took care of business. Some of my fellow Jews made contact with one of his closest followers and convinced him to betray his master and hand him over. By the end of the night, the high priest ordered that Jesus be killed. It was about time. Someone did something. This foolishness had gone on long enough. And the next morning, Jesus was handed over to the Romans for a proper criminal execution. Now, the Romans had their flaws, but they were masters of death. And their crowning achievement was crucifixion. It allowed them to inflict the maximum amount of pain and humiliation on their victims while keeping them alive as long as humanly possible. 
but Jesus deserved it. So they tore him apart with whips made of bone and glass. They, they shoved a crown of thorns on his head like he was some kind of king. And then they marched him up a hill and nailed him into a cross and hung him out in front of the whole city for the world to see him for what he really was. A false prophet, another dead end, an empty promise. A sign above the cross read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Did people really still think that this was our King? I mean, if this was God, why didn't He come down off of that cross and show us? I'll tell you why. He couldn't. He was just a man. And He hung there helpless until He died. And so that was that, or so I thought. A few days after Jesus had been buried, I began to hear rumors, people saying that they had seen him alive. <laughs> Are you kidding me? After everything, after Jesus was put in that tomb, I thought he would finally leave me alone. Oh, but it gets worse. Groups gathered to talk about him. Fellow Jews prayed to him. They even baptized each other in his name, forming this new religion, this cult. They called themselves the way. Well, I wasn't about to stand by and watch as the God of our ancestors was betrayed like this. So I made it my mission my life's work to stamp out this foolishness wherever it started. Now, the name Saul would strike fear into the hearts of anyone foolish enough to associate themselves with Jesus Christ. For years, I hunted them down. Day after day, I stood by and watched as they were beaten, thrown in prison, and killed. And every night, I thanked God for using me to rid the world of these liars and lunatics. But of all the men and women that I rested over the years, there's one face I can't get out of my head. A young man named Stephen had been brought before the Jewish high court for questioning. His crime? Blasphemy, like all the others. But unlike the others, when he was asked to give a defense for his charges, he spoke without fear. He spoke of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He told stories of Moses and the Israelites. This kid clearly knew his Torah. He even reminded me a bit of myself. And the more he spoke, the more I found myself agreeing with almost everything he had to say right up until he mentioned Jesus. He pointed at us, pointed at me, and shouted, you have betrayed and murdered the righteous one. At that, the whole courtroom was thrown into chaos. Judges rushed at him, dragged him out of the court, dragged him out of the city, and started throwing rocks at him. The poor kid had sealed his fate. The whole time, Stephen just prayed. And with each hit, his body became more broken and more bloodied until finally he fell to the ground and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. I couldn't believe it. His final words were a prayer for the men who were killing him. I seem to recall Jesus saying something similar. What made these people so crazy? What was wrong with them? What a waste. Stephen would have made a great rabbi. In a different life, he might have even been one of my students. Oh well. And there's one less Christian to worry about. So that was my life. Catching and killing Christians. It started in Jerusalem, but that wasn't enough. This movement, the way, was spreading far faster than I had imagined. 
So I got more letters signed from the chief priests and the Roman government. I used my dual citizenship to its full advantage to take these Christ followers down. I would travel to nearby cities and bring back anyone I found there that called themselves a Christian. Once I got them to Jerusalem, they didn't stand a chance. These letters were as good as death sentences. So I set off for Damascus with some of my companions. We were walking down the road, talking, joking around like it was any other day. <sighs> any other day. Little did I know what was about to happen. Just as we were outside the city limits, suddenly a bright light flashed all around me. And then I heard it. A voice. It was almost as if the light was speaking to me. It said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? What? I didn't understand. Who are you? His next word shook me to the core. I'm Jesus. No, 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 no. Jesus was dead. I saw him bleed out on that cross. I'm Jesus whom you're persecuting, Saul. And at his final words, everything went black. I couldn't see. I was blind. I fumbled around in the dark until I found my companions and they led me the rest of the way into the city. They tried to offer me food and drink, but I couldn't. I felt sick. My very soul felt sick. What had just happened? If that wasn't Jesus, then what was going on? But what if it was? Oh no. All those people. Stephen. God, what had I done? I, I was the one who betrayed you. It was me. I I had bad mouthed you. I cheered while they drove nails in your hands. The whole time, I, I thought I was the good guy. I thought I was doing what you wanted. Now I don't know who I am anymore. I didn't know what to do. What do I do? So I just prayed. I prayed the hardest I have ever prayed before in my life. For three days, I didn't eat, sleep, or drink. I just cried out to God. I must have said I'm sorry over a thousand times. And then on the third day, I got a visitor, a man named Ananias said God had sent him. Well, he was a Christian. So I, I figured God must have sent him. Because what Christian would want anything to do with me after what I had done to them? He put his hands on my eyes and these things like scales fell out. And slowly my world came back into focus. I could see again. And you'd think I'd be happy. But I still felt so lost in darkness. And as if he could read my mind, Ananias said he wasn't just there to help me see with my eyes. He was there to help me see with my heart. He said, you were wrong, Saul. Jesus was the Son of God. He was exactly who he said he was. And he had died, but he hadn't stayed that way. And now, we can be forgiven for anything. 
anything. No. No, not me. Not after what I've done. Not after who I've been. But he said, Saul, would you like to be forgiven? Yes. Yes, please, yes. And then a Christian prayed for me. A Christian baptized me, Saul, in the name of Jesus Christ. One man went under the water that day and a different man came out. Everything changed after that. I spent the next few days in Damascus, but instead of arresting people for preaching, I joined them. I was making all these connections from the law and the prophets and the ministry of Jesus. I could quote these prophecies from, from my childhood, word for word, and now explain how it all pointed to Jesus. It all is fulfilled in Jesus. I was filled with this, this fire to speak, this, this passion to preach that I had never experienced before, teaching in the synagogues. I had good news and I couldn't keep it to myself. Well, most people call me Paul now. And I don't mind. In fact, I'm, I'm proud of my Roman name even though it means small because it reminds me that my name must be small so that God's name can be great. I'm the chief of all sinners, the most arrogant idiot of all. But now God shows me off as living proof that he can save anyone from anything including you. If you have been wandering around in the dark, Jesus is inviting you into his light. All you have to do is open your eyes.